I all have another amazing game to show you. This is Stockfish against Leela. Stockfish, the number one rated chess engine in the world. Uh, so against Leela 11089 in the Chesscom Computer Championship, Rapid Rumble, 15 minutes with a 5 second increment. Stage 2, the opening moves, the first four ply or half moves are the Shigurin defense, named after the great player Mikhail Shigurin, who became a kind of father of the Soviet chess school, very influential, and the last of the great romantic players, according to Wiki. So we have knight f3, e6, knight c3, knight f6, e3, bishop e7, a3, Leela castles, bishop d3, and now d takes c4. This seems to be a very, very good plan indeed to take on c4 here. And then now bishop d6 to play for e5. This seems very thematic looking. And in fact, after e4, e5, white closes the position with d5. Taking uh, doesn't seem to offer anything. This seems to be perfectly fine for black. So d5, knight e7. It seems actually black has a great bishop here. There's no problem bishop. And the knight's also got g6. And now this will stop any grabbing that bishop. Well, any use of the b5 square generally. Knight castles, bishop d7. Uh, we have here bishop g5, knight g6. Knight h4. This is interesting. Knight h4, very interesting. Leela plays actually h6. And this reminds me, actually, of... A key Spassky against Fisher World Championship 1972 game, where because we have Knight takes g6 here, hitting the rook. F takes so a pawn capturing away from the center. And if you remember, we had this peculiar pawn structure at least in one of the uh, Spassky Fisher games. G5, and this is a perk that it not only marks the f4 square for a potential knight maneuver to f4, but also the queen can exert pressure on the center and support g4. So this is very, very nifty play. I think Fisher would approve. Bishop e2, queen e8. So coming to g6 here, rook e1, queen g6. So yes, it needs a radical solution here. Otherwise, white could quickly go downhill. And the mighty stockfish finds a radical solution. If it plays bishop f1, then g4, and black's having a whale of a time. Uh, for example, here, knight takes e4. Uh, becomes possible under certain circumstances. Yeah, sw sweeping those center pawns away. So radical solution, g4. Now here, knight takes e4 has become impossible. There's no way of supporting this knight after queen uh, c2, for example. Uh, that's, that's a very, very nasty uh, pin here. So... That's ignored. Rook f7, rook c1, knight h7, bishop d3, knight f8. The knight is heading for f4. And this bishop e2 also supported this knight coming to f5. So they're mirroring each other's knight plans. And that also reminds me historically of something. A Capablanca Alakine game where they were trying to put knights on c4 and c5 respectively. Uh, Alakine was playing black, tried to entrench, he did a nice deep maneuver to put, try and put a knight to c4, and Capablanca was doing the same thing. And here, they're both doing the same thing with f4. I know, I, I have these, I, I, can, I can look back to historical games sometimes and see some interesting patterns of play. So anyway, so they've both mirrored each other's knight entrenchment there. Bishop takes f4. Now it's important, it seems, Although black would like that e5 square, it seems it's not available. G takes was played. On e takes, it seems as though queen b3 uh, is a nuisance. Like this position is just too much of a nuisance. White has a small edge. Uh, so, and with the e5 break actually becoming possible for white. So Leela doesn't want to give the opponent major pawn breaks. Uh, so yeah, this, this is played much safer. Now there is an idea here that this knight after king h2 could actually be trapped with bishop f8 and g6 but this has all been calculated by stockfish playing king h2 like this. Uh, we have king h7. If an attempt to trap the knight is made with g6 here there's simply rook g1. So if g6 it can just be ignored. This position ends up black getting absolutely massacred. This is the start of a massacre position. 
not any good at all. So we have much safer king h7 being played, rook g1. So yeah, this knight is immune to being trapped really. There's just no point uh, here. It's not, g6 is not on the cards. Anyway, there's all, all already, there's knight takes d6 at the moment anyway, without bishop f8. Rook h8, queen b3, b5. Uh, now here, bishop e2 was played. King g8, bishop f3, g6 finally, but the knight takes on d6. King g2, uh, h5, king f1. Uh, there's not much mileage in g takes h5 here. This is just even position. So king f1, king g7. Now it's, that's taken, giving h3, the king goes to the center. And now g5, so this is interesting, as though g4 might be possible in the future. At the moment, clearly some problems rook c6 king h6 so getting out of the way maybe to support g4 in the future with rook g8 bishop g4 stopping any uh, plan bishop takes rook takes f3 though king d2 rook d8 and queen c3 now king takes h5 of all things the king's crawling up the board uh rook g7 king d3 g4 so this is exciting on this side of the board for leela leela's got a potential pass pawn Using the pin here with queen c5, that's protected. The queen comes back. Uh, now, yeah, it looks as though there's not enough to really force a breakthrough at the moment. But let's see what happens. That a pawn is taken. Queen h2, queen f4. Now here, queen c5 again. g3 now. But note, this is very tactical. It's not just exploiting the pin. The queen is eyeing g1. So what has Leela done? Has she just blundered? Because Queen takes G3, bang, Rook G1. Has Leela blundered? No, this was actually her intention. Queen F6. There is a pass pawn now. So let's count pawns. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, pawn down, but this is a dangerous looking past pawn. Okay, but it looks as though white now two pawns up. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, two pawns up. This looks a little bit as though could black be in trouble even with the pass pawn. But check now here gives the idea that maybe the rooks are doubling at some point. Uh, we have queen f7, king a1, rook d2. Yeah, with the potential maybe to double rook c3 though, hitting f3. There's no time to double here because bang, rook f takes f3. This is just winning for white so we have f2 uh queen b6 rook e2 with idea rook e1 king gets out of the way of any potential check to be able to take on f2 now on rook e1 uh rook comes to support now queen takes d6 so it looks as though uh this is quite dangerous rook takes e4 is played queen d8 dangerous for both sides maybe rook e1 check and now actually there's a series of perpetual checks which Stockfish takes actually and the game ends here actually. If Stockfish, yeah, it's that pawn is equalizing it seems uh, at least. If White tries Rook C7 then actually there's a situation where the pawn triumphs it seems. So I think the draw had to be taken by the mighty Stockfish. The king could potentially escape and be uh, a Rook up very usefully. Uh, with an advantage potentially but yeah let's take back to the final position so some undertones there of um, uh, Spassky Fisher I thought with that capture away from the center the maneuver to g6 and then of, of <laughs> Capablanca against Alakine with the, the sym symmetry uh, knight maneuvers so really nice positional play from both sides actually demonstrated uh, Stockfish is a very well rounded solid engine dominating the tournament at the moment and there's some other encounters which uh, are very, very exciting to to cover soon as well. So I'll try and do that soon. Hope you enjoyed this one. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.